now getting to areas that um, you know how this kind of information can change people's conception of life and the world and our place in it. This this is um, you know where it really starts to hit home. It's not just about finding out what's happening. It's what, what does this really mean for us, right? And we hear from people um, who have had NDEs that it's been a very transformative experience. They don't care so much anymore about all the things that we normally run after, like status and money and power and those sorts of things, but they want to be more loving and kind and generous and compassionate to their fellow humans. Um, through, what about through uh, the studies of um, cases of the reincarnation type of have you learned anything that indicates that we need to live our lives differently especially with traditional ideas around piety and karma well that's that's sort of a complex question so um yeah i mean we don't get any obvious evidence of karma in the sense that um if if you chop off someone's arm in, in your past life, you don't come back without an arm. In fact, the, the other person may come back w w without an arm. Um, so that, that's a whole nother topic, but birth defect cases. But um, but in more subtle ways, and of course, karma can be a very, you know, I'm not an expert on karma, but it can be a lot more subtle than what we kind of think of as just, you know, uh, karmic retribution kind of stuff. Yeah. And in a subtle way, it, it seems that what happened in the past life may affect uh, the current one. Um, um, but regardless, I mean, what I think these cases show is that, I mean, you can't just map these cases onto physical as understanding of reality. And, and, you know, I think what they show is that if you accept them, that there is this piece of us, this consciousness piece that is, that we all have, uh, that is separate from this physical reality. And so there is this commonality that we all have that gets uh, disguised by our differences of, you know, different country, different race, different sex, whatever. Mm -hmm. But there is this commonality uh, in us. And um, I mean, I, I've come to, th to think that, that, that actually consciousness is at the core of reality, that, you know, physical yeah. reality just grows out of it. Um, and, and that ultimately it, it all comes down to consciousness and they, you know if you want to substitute the word spirit i mean i, I wouldn't argue with that i mean it's a religious mm -hmm. term but um so it means you know in a way we're kind of all in this together and and uh, again the little things like you mentioned status and so forth i mean in the long run you know they aren't important uh, but treating each other decently and and you know trying to um make things a little easier for everyone and you know being as kind and respectful of each other as we can i mean that that i hope people you know take that that from the work that that you know we may come back as different people uh in different settings but but it's something that we're all doing together and and so you know have respect for everyone mm. has there been any indications from the data uh about anything that people uh, anything about a person's previous life uh, or their or their death that determines what their next circumstances in their next life are going to be well not really i mean that most of the children remember a past life uh in the same country uh, with some exceptions um and they, um, but it may well be to come through with intact memories uh, it doesn't mean that patterns that are necessarily universal, but um, anyway, most of them are from the same country, uh, but not all of them. And, and uh, for instance, Ian studied a couple of dozen cases of uh, children in Burma who said that they had been Japanese soldiers who were killed in Burma during World War II. Mm -hmm. uh, so in that case, there was, I don't know if there's a geographical connection, but there, there were people who were essentially enemies and that life and then they come back and you know with the other population um so anyway to get to your your question actually i mean if somebody lived a bad life you know we're a bad person they killed people or whatever and we've got people you know reported doing some bad things in their past life it it certainly doesn't correspond like with with how wealthy a family you're gonna go into you know, you know it's hard to assess did you end up having a good placement this time because you know you can be in a 
rich family that abuses the kids or you know you can be in a poor very loving family so i mean it, it's hard really to right say much about okay. that i hear you i hear yeah, you. yeah. yeah. okay okay yeah I, I i must confess i um i you know have an affinity for our traditional ideas around karma but even mm -hmm. even um on that basis with you know from vedic philosophy and that sort of thing um it, it's always said that the intricacies of karma are very complex and hard to understand right right and, yeah and yeah. of course they may involve multiple past lives too exactly we don't know yeah. what the accumulated debt and yeah, credit exactly might be exactly yeah. all yeah. right all right so well, let's let's move on from that then shall we um okay so um uh, I'm interested in uh, any theoretical models uh, mm. about what's going on here uh, that can accommodate this this phenomenon. What what are your you know you've touched on that just now about um, yeah. that consciousness is the basis. Can you elaborate a little bit more about that, please? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, there quantum physics is really some weird stuff, and it gets into. Uh, tons of interpret they say there are as many interpretations of, of quantum mechanics as there are quantum th theorists um, <laughs> but the one reasonable i mean i think idea is that essentially th that the world is made of of observations and knowledge ultimately rather than you know waves and particles or whatever and, and um i mean a hard back. john wheeler is a very well-known physicist who talked about participatory universe um so anyway if you start going that route sort of an idealistic kind of a, as opposed to physicalist kind of approach then you see that if the physical is secondary well it means the physical brain is secondary to you know consciousness or um mind uh so why would it why would a consciousness end when, when the physical brain dies um, now, they, you know, there are a lot of different ways you can look at this, and, and Ian focused more instead on the idea of a vehicle, what he gave it a term psychophore, but yeah. that, you know, he argued that um, these image memories or behavioral memories are sometimes physical aspects that they're entwined and that they would stay entwined in some sort of vehicle, you know, called psychophore that, that might be capable of changing if, if it had new experiences. And that then it would then um, carry over to the next life. Um, I'm not sure a vehicle is necessary. And, and I mean, I, let me say, first of all, if there is this realm of consciousness, um, is almost certainly not linear in the way we think of. And it's probably inconceivable, much of it can be kind of inconceivable that, that I mean, we can understand it. But, um, but I, my current thinking is that there may be this, sort of continuing line of, of observations or observership that doesn't end when the physical brain dies, but can continue on and in our cases then show up in, in another life. Um, but it's not exactly a, an entity or a, you know, a psychophore or consciousness or whatever, but, but more just a continuation um so that's where i am these days of your of your research and we i know we talked about that at the beginning but i'm, I'm kind of quite interested to know about uh you know what has been the the impact in the academic world for this kind of uh, uh this investigation the findings that you've um come out with what's been the reaction in general like well i think I think it depends who you're talking about. I mean, you never know who's open to this material. Um, so uh, I gave a, what's called a grand rounds um, for pediatric, the pediatric department here a couple of weeks ago, which means all the faculty get and residents and med students get together and listen to a lecture. It's called grand rounds. Uh, so I gave them a lecture on this topic. It's kind of a long story how I even got invited to, to give it, but. You know, I'm sure that there are plenty of people either who skipped it or just kind of rolled their eyes out of it. Yeah. Uh, but there are two people after me, two faculty members who contacted me and said, you know, this is fascinating and let's talk. And in fact, one of them said he'd had a near death experience when he was a child and, and he works with dying patients. So he's got various you know experiences. Um, so on an individual level, I, I think we 
can impact people in academics just like anybody else. Yep. Um, in sort of a general way, I mean, we haven't moved, uh, you know, the the general Western mindset, obviously, that, you know, the materialistic kind of uh, scientific mindset, any, uh, and, it, and it may well be done sort of one person at a time uh, until eventually, yeah. you know, there's enough where it, it then uh, you, you hit a tipping point and, and, and suddenly uh, things change. But but for now, it's, it's more of, of um, reaching people how we can. And, you know, we, we publish in scientific journals, but some of them are, are not as widespread. The word doesn't spread as much as we would like. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But, you know, we keep trying and, and we're taking it sort of bite at a time and, and gradually, I think, it having an effect. Did, did you ever have a situation where um, a, a scientific or academic um, person who is dead against the conclusions and, and the information that you're drawing who's a big big time detractor that they've actually you've turned them around and they've become a surprised appreciator? Well, we haven't had a sort of a public, you know, official skeptic um, who, who then oh, they'll, they'll converted. Never change. They'll never change. They'll yeah. never change. They, 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 yeah. They've got their heels dug in on that. Well, exactly. But I mean, I've certainly had people who said they did not believe in this stuff before, but as they learned about our research, they became open yep. to it. I mean, that, that happens frequently. Yeah. Uh, that must be very gratifying as well, yeah. I would imagine. <laughs> Uh, and and yes. so, what about what about yourself personally? Then I I, I read mm. that you've been you were raised a Southern Baptist. You're not, a, but you don't really adhere to a particular religion. But um, has this? Do you feel that this has made you want to be a more spiritual person? Uh, what would that mean for you? Yeah, I mean, I would say I'm now in the camp um, spiritual but not religious, which is a category now. So yeah, I mean, yeah. I, as an adult, I have not practiced. In a religion, but I, I um, but you know, it's my way of is of exploring this all, and you know, it's kind of part of my journey. And so, right. so yes, I mean, I think it's made me more. I'm gonna hate to say I've become more spiritual. It sounds a little grandiose, but I, I've become more attuned to things beyond just the kind of the physical world. And, and you know, I try to be more attuned than just to the day to day kind of grind that we all go through, but, but, you know, being open more to the bigger picture. Um, so it, yeah. it's a journey, it's a journey for me, like it is everyone else. I mean, I, I have become, as I've been in this field, I have become much more persuaded that there is more than just the physical world. Um, yeah, yeah, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, yeah. That, that does, that doesn't surprise me in the least. But <laughs> does that lead you to um, doing things differently, like perhaps getting into um, things like meditation or um, trying to be, um, you know, less worldly attached uh, and that sort of thing? Did that affect you in that kind of way? Yeah, and, and for a while I, I did meditate and I confess I'm, I'm lapsed. Yeah elapsed meditator but um but you know I, I hope that the mindset is still my mindset is different than it was before that is more is more open to um the bigger picture and, and you know the, the sort of the oneness of of it all um but again i'm unlike everyone else that some days it, it's a lot easier than others yeah, look, I've got to say that this research is 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 very very uplifting and very encouraging, mm. and uh, you know, the, the, having the possibility that uh, we are not just these mere physical machines which are destined to obliteration, and that's it. <laughs> I, I think that's really really good news. Really yeah. good news. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I agree, and and um, yeah, I mean, we, we're not going to figure out all the details, but but there, is, I think, we can say there is good evidence that there. Are, can be this continuation after we die and and um so yeah that's good news and and, and given that you've absorbed much of your life in this in this field of study mm. and and there's so much more to do if, if you do come back would you hope to uh take up this kind of work uh in the next life uh well i haven't thought that specifically um i, I hope that i would have learned some from this and and be sort of a better person or be a more spiritual person. But, you know, that can show up in a lot of different ways. And I mean, yeah. I, I can imagine, you know, in this life, 
I love music, but I have absolutely no ability. I mean, I couldn't carry a tune to save my life. Uh, so, you know, life as a musician on the road more. I mean, that you can certainly be very spiritual in that way. And that, that would be a different kind of life to have. Or, I mean, I can imagine a thousand of them. Um, but no, I mean, just doing this for certain, I mean, it could happen, but I, I, there are lots of other kinds of experiences to have. So, you know, I would be open to kind of whatever comes my way. It's, uh, it sounds like you've just revealed your secret desire to be a rock star in your next life. Right. Well, the, yeah, there, I also had a baseball player when I was a young child. But yeah, I let that one go. But but maybe that will, that'll be their next time too. Well, this time you're an academic rock star. So uh, thank you very, very much for your work. And uh, thanks for taking the time to do an interview with me today, Jim. And well, of course, it's been great. Appreciate, appreciate it very much. Um, and just once again, the, your latest publication is called um, Before. Uh, what's the tagline on that one? Uh, children's Memories of Previous Lives. All right. And people can find that in any good bookstore. And where can they find you online? Uh, well, of course, you can just Google me or uh, jimbtucker.com uh, or our UVA website, uh, if people can remember it, uvadops.org. But again, if, if you just Google my name, it's easy enough to find me. Easy enough to find. All righty. Yeah. Thank you very much. Much yep. appreciated. Thanks. See you. Bye. Bye.